Good afternoon guys, uh, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. This video is going to be a back to basics that goes into some explanations of um, SSL VPN and the various different ways. Um, it's just going to be a run through. Um, I'm going to have another video that actually goes into detail as to how to configure it and how to troubleshoot it as well. Uh, the troubleshooting one will be more advanced. Um, but with that being said, it's relative. It's it's not super complicated or anything like that. So SSL VPN, um, basically the best way to look at it is uh, you're out and about, you're remote, and you want to be able to dial into your your headquarters or your home network or you know whatever location the FortiGate is housed in, and then gain access to those resources that are behind said device. Uh, most common application is uh, consultants that are on the road or maybe doctors that are bouncing around from uh, medical institution to medical institution. They have to be able to phone home to their headquarters to access files or servers or, or anything like that that they keep at one specific location. And of course SSL VPN uses SSL so it's, it's encrypted and it's secure. Um, uh, don't get this confused with IPsec VPN. Um, if you're using FortiClient or any of the other vendors like uh, Cisco AnyConnect and things like that, the end client is able to do IPsec. Um, but for the sake of having the most success, you want to use SSL VPN. Um, because it goes out over 443, which means most you know hotel Wi-Fi's and uh, hospital Wi-Fi's and things like that aren't going to kill it which means when your guys get on site they don't have to worry about being up the creek without a paddle right so uh, general concept my laptop has Forta client on it I tell it to remote connect and if I'm doing split tunneling that means all my internet goes out my standard way from wherever I am I can still access resources that are local to that network or if the FortiGate administrator enables full tunnel, that means all my traffic gets pushed through the VPN and logically and everything it looks as though I'm on that network only. Um, when you do full tunnel, you lose access to local resources and things like that. So um, just be weary of that. Uh, gotchas for each of them is if you have if you use full tunnel you need to have SSL VPN to whatever resources you want to access but you also need SSL VPN to the internet interface policies built so because your internet surfing is going to go through that route as well um, split tunnels usually a little bit more lightweight and preferred for a lot of organizations the catch there is that if your central network and the network that you're on overlap as far as subnet space you can get some wonky behavior there so things to be wary of. Anyways, I'm going to switch over to my screen now. So this is the VPN section of um, a Forta gate, and this particular gate is running code 602. And the, the area that we're going to be interested in mostly is uh, the SSL VPN section. So I'm going to com com comb through these. First things first is your SSL VPN portal. This is where you create um, custom portals and whatnot for users or groups that you want to behave differently. The ones that come in the box are web access, tunnel access, and full access. So what full access means is that you can, they can use a Forta client, they can connect in and access resources directly as though they're on the network. And this kind of, you know, it runs through. Tunnel mode, split tunneling, if you enable split tunneling, you have to tell it what the local subnet is. Reason being is because whenever they can, the end user connects, it's going to install that route on their machine and say, hey, to get to this address space, go out through your Forta client. Um, if you uncheck split tunneling, then that's full tunneling, which means everything goes over just like you're local to that machine. Uh, IPv6 tunnel mode, we're not going to cover that right now. Most environments still don't use IPv6, and it's to be honest, IPv6 is a little bit more complicated for most people, so we'll make that a, a more in-depth video. 
So this tunnel mode is specific to for a client connecting. And full access gives people access to both tunnel and web mode. So they have some flexibility there. Web mode is specific to people accessing resources through the portal page. Usually in situations like this, you don't trust your end user to be intelligent enough or knowledgeable enough. They're not stupid, they just don't know, right? They're ignorant to the fact to be able to get to the proper resources. So you want to streamline everything and make it easy. So what <clears throat> on web mode, you can give them a custom portal name, things like that. And for instance, this is going to be Mike's demo portal. And for my theme, I want it to be red. And for my bookmark, we'll say fortinetguru.com. Mm -hmm. Now this is just for example that usually what you want to do here is you want to have internal internet websites accessed from here. Um, but that's just an example bookmark so that when we log in you can see it. But you can show the login history so they'll get a little prompt that shows them you know, when they were logged in and things like that. And then you can even give them the ability to download for the client if they don't already have it. Now since this is full access obviously that makes sense. Um, you're not limited on the bookmarks. You can do, you know, web Citrix if you're doing VDI or something like that. Um, the brilliance of the web portal is, you tell your users to go to HTTPS, you know, uh, VPN dot company dot com, and they have icons once they log in, which are defined by these bookmarks, right? Um, and it gives them the ability to access the resources that they should have without having to know how to use remote desktop or um, how to set up an FTP box, you know, anything like that. It just keeps it simple for your general users. And of course, the bookmarks are defined based on the user group that's associated with the portal. So if you have accountants, you just create an accountant portal with accounting bookmarks and you assign that group to it. It's just, it's so simple. So this is my demo one. It's full access. Um, you have to have policy set up. So right now I have it told to listen to my outside interface, which is um, WAN1 and WAN2 tied to it. Allow access from anyone. Idle logout. You can make it actually kick people off whenever they're logged in. Uh, require a client certificate. That's if you're using you know PKI or something along those lines to actually get people set up. A little bit more information with regards to tunnel mode setting. You can actually define what DNS servers users get whenever they connect. So you might have DNS servers that um, are only available right to SSL VPN, depending on how your segmentation is done, so that might be a good idea. And then of course you can allow endpoint registration for your Forta client. Now what I'm going to do is just say, you know, all users have full access. No. Even better, I'm going to create a user. So users and device groups. Create a new group, we'll call it SSL, or we'll call it full access. Remember, we'll create a user. Next, call this in mic. Create a password called Mike123. Continue, continue, enable, and we'll assign them to. Oh, it's not created yet. Submit. No, no, submit. Select them here. Okay, cool. That's my full access group. It has my Mike user in there. Go back to VPN, my portal, full access. That's configured exactly how it should be. So under settings, I'll just say, you know, create new. If you are a member of the full access group, you get the full access portal. Boom. Pretty straightforward, right? Listen on this interface. Allow from any host. Um, I, I don't have to worry about assigning any real DNS servers here because this is just a demo, but you normally want to list your internal DNS servers so that name resolution and things like that work fine. 
and then full access users slash groups give them the full access portal okay because I'm using the built-in cert that's why I have all the ugliness up there and for the sake of this just create some policy we'll call it SSL VPN in and it'll be SSL VPN to inside user full access to all resources all no that okay helps if I actually put the address. So on SSL VPN policies, by the way, you have to list not only the source address space, but you have to list um, the group that's associated with it because all your policy is going to be driven by that. Because obviously if they're a member of mechanics, they don't need a member of um, full access. So this is my policy to allow that. So now, just snatch this real quick. This is my portal page. I can launch portal client. I can log in. My account was Mike. I think my password was this. Boom, I'm in. It's red because that's what I told it to be. Mike's demo portal. And then here's my bookmark. Now, obviously, it's not going to work because it's not within my area, right? So, um, but you would build like your icons to RDP or to FTP or to your Samba shares and all that, and then the, the person, it they don't need for the client to actually access it, which is beautiful. And of course, the end user can actually build their own as well, but you could also take this away. So um, that's a real quick high level on SSL VPN using web portal page. Um, portal is usually the most convenient, especially for folks that are bouncing from device to device. Uh, it keeps their bookmarks centralized, um, limits exposure to the resources because if they're tunneling in and their device has malware or something malicious on it and your host checker, which is a completely another video, but you can actually make Forta clients scan the machine and make sure it meets certain criteria before it allows them to connect to your network, which is beautiful, right? But, um, you know, if something gets by that and bad stuff hops on your network because of the way your full tunnel was configured obviously you're going to have a real bad time so web portal it does a very good job of mitigating um, a lot of threats while still providing the availability right and at the end of the day and this is probably going to make a lot of security folks upset because by default security people want to cut access bare minimum right at the end of the day Risk is a business decision, not an IT decision. If the organization says it's an acceptable risk to provide people remote access, SSL VPN and SSL portals and things like that are a very, very um, solid solution to provide the access that's necessary, the availability of the CIA triad, without you know nuking integrity or um, confidentiality. So. You know, obviously you build your security program around your organization and um, SSL VPN is an awesome way to get what you need so uh, any questions specific to this please don't hesitate to ask below um, this is just a quick run through I'm gonna do a demo on how to do um, a split tunnel a full tunnel and then a comparison of the two on the video so that you can actually get a real-life drill down but um it's powerful. You guys will enjoy it. So, thank you.